All right, everyone, welcome to another episode of the Low Float Strategies Play with the High Flying Bull. Now, as always, just as a disclaimer, before we dive in, we would like to mention that the information we provide is not financial advice. You are 100% responsible for the investment decisions you make, and the information we provide is solely for education purposes and nothing more. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the company we are covering today is FWBI. It did pop up on our scanners. Now, if you are a member of Xtrades, you will see that I did alert this play in the community right here. And we love adding at support lines of breakout channels because the market doesn't really have to move much against us to negate our analysis. It's just one of the many useful tips and tricks to succeed in the game that you will find at the Xtrades community. So why is FWBI on watch? So I actually... I'm I'm recording this this trade as I went through as I, you know, played through it because I want you to see how I kind of approached this and how I saw the opportunity in real time. I think that's really important as traders. I think, you know, it's one thing to have case studies to look at, but it's another thing to really identify the opportunity in the moment. And if you can learn to identify the opportunity in the moment, you're already very very much ahead of the game here because. That really is um, what you do need to be successful. So let's just play this out here. So first of all, why would I trade this stock? So I have four very simple criteria. The four criteria that I have is it must be in a breakout pattern. So right here, over here, we'll see that there's a flat top forming. A flat top setup is one simply where we have uh, this, the same resistance levels. So the resistance levels here. Here, relatively the same price levels, but we'll have this idea of where the support is actually um, ascending. So um, it's actually got higher lows. So we're gonna we're gonna see that there will be a higher low after this low, a higher low after this low, and so forth. So that's a that's a great breakout pattern to trade. It's one of my favorites. Another thing that's also very important is that it's a low float stock. So low float basically means the supply of shares publicly traded on the market. So for me personally, I like to trade stocks with floats under 100 million because that's where we can see explosive moves, right? Because we have a large amount of demand for a very limited amount of supply. And you can do the math, that can lead to explosive price action. And as day traders, we're at, like ultimately looking for that volatility. We also have three times relative volume. Um, but actually, so I, I do look for three times relative volume or more. But in actuality, this play had 200 times relative volume. So relative volume is very important because it tells a story. Relative volume tells you that your bias for a stock is confirmed with many other traders. When we're looking at it from the long side, chances are there's many other traders, many other algorithm traders. Um, they're all looking at the stock in probably a similar way. And that's that's incredibly key because that's what will bring volume and volume drives price action. Okay, but let's get into the trade. So that's the four. So. Um, those are my three criteria. There's actually one more piece of criteria. It's what we need is a valid news catalyst. So news catalyst is really important because without a news catalyst, there's really no reason for volume to come in. So what's the news catalyst here? So I'll take a quick look at it. So again, I'll use FinViz for, again, identifying uh, my the statistics, but also the news. So I'll look at the news and the news is telling us something. So the news is telling us that they were basically um, accepted to a very notable presentation event to present their um, their product. Um, so one of the products that uh, is is pretty much, I mean, anything in biotech is pretty little you know, a little bit difficult to kind of wind through, especially if you're not from that sort of community and not really in that industry. But they have a wave of new products. And if when they're accepted to a notable event, that means that they'll have more chance for marketing. They'll have more chance for um, you know, the exposure they need to get that FDA approval. 
So it really was uh, great news in that regard. So that was the news catalyst. So now we go back and now I'm looking here and I'm looking for the ads on support. So I buy on support. So we're gonna wait here, we're gonna wait here. I'm just gonna watch the stock. So it's, it's coming down and look at the volume. So I want you to look at the volume because we're looking for low volume pullbacks. Considerably, it is a little bit large here. But notice the volume die down. So notice, notice the volume right here. It's dying down. And, you know, when we look for vol so volume is a very big indicator. Volume tells us that as it dies down, so you see it dies down, it suggests to us the trend is still intact. So the trend is still intact. That means that we can see trend continuation. So there we go. It confirmed a new low. Confirmed a new low right there. And you can look at the price action. It kind of tells. So I, I added here. I added about here um, as we saw volume die off. And my ultimately my uh, uh, if actually if I play this a little bit a little bit farther. Just played a little bit farther there. Um, I think I actually added this a little bit later, later on. Probably near around closer to nine o'clock Pacific time. Yeah, absolutely. So right away, um, I mean, at this point, so, I am I am looking to add. So look at the, look at volume. So it goes down. It pretty much goes from a very large, very large selling volume to practically no selling volume at all. And what that means is that we have support here. We have support that's quite strong. Um, so I'll be looking to add there. And my stop is going to be about three sixty eight at that point. So it's right below these levels. So just giving a little bit of room. Um, that's where support I would say is broken. So my entry was right about there, 381. And I think I noted that right there. And I'm looking for the move ultimately up to 430. But I also realized that with my stop at, 430, my, at, at 368 and my entry at 381, I have a three to one risk reward ratio uh, at only about 420. So at that point, when you have a three to one uh, plus potential setup, I'm always looking to take profits at three to one. I think in these marking conditions, there's lots of opportunity in that regard. So I'm going to be looking to add. So I've added at 381. Let's speed it up a little bit more. And right there on that. So um, basically what I like to do is for every movement that's 10. So when we have a movement that takes our trade, 10 ticks in our favor, so plus 10 cents, I like to shave 20% of my position. And that's purely out of being defensive. So I, I if I take 20% of the shares off the table, I'm basically reducing my risk by about 30 to 40%, which can be huge as you roll this over in a thousand trade sample size say in, in the course of a year. So that's my first sell, taking just 20%. The next cell will be at 420. Let's speed this up a little bit. And there we go. And that's where we're ultimately taking profits, just like that. We took 70% off the table. We've realized our profit objective. And now we're just waiting. We've, we'll adjust our stop to break even. We're protecting those realized profits and we're going to see what else the market has available to give to us for the stock. And we see immediately, so immediately as it goes up, in the matter of five minutes, we see the rise all the way from 420 to as high as almost $5 a share. And at that point, it's purely subjective when you would like to cut your runner position. But one thing is for sure is that you would want to... Um, you would want to adjust your stop to break even to protect the realized profits that you already made. That is key. And if you uh, if you can do that, if you can lock in 
if you can just lock in profit in this, uh, your your first two profit targets, adjust your stop to a place where you won't lose those realized profits. You're truly positioning yourself in a place that you can really scale and profit regardless of the markets you trade in. And that's the goal of traders. We want to profit regardless of the market sentiment. So that's all for today. I appreciate um, you, you know, I appreciate you guys watching this. I hope you've learned a little bit about this and how I trade. Um, you know, that's all for today. And as always, feel free to message us, uh, me at the, the High Flying Bull, if you have any questions. Um, thanks for listening and we'll see you next time. And of course, again, I will say this once more, feel free to reach out to, to me with any questions. Um, I absolutely love it when people ask me questions. It's um, it's what I do, and I'm here to help those in the community. All right, guys. Cheers.